Another day in paradise. This is ridiculous. The uh, opportunity to work with Ken Reed and, and Rob Boyd, I'm digging it. Digging it these days for Josh Dewick finds him atop Grouse Mountain in North Vancouver, spending his few idle days away from the hectic life of a downhill sit ski champion. Hobnobbing with some of Canada's most celebrated ski legends, all doing their bit to promote Alpine Canada. Uh, as mentioned, my name's Josh Dewick. For me, I'm a skier, through and through. I'm not sure if the shaggy hair and the, uh, the unkempt face states that for you, but I'm a skier. And ever since I was a little guy, I wanted to be a professional ski bum. You know, I haven't always been in this wheelchair. It's actually just recently that I've acquired this disability. And I made it to the BC Freestyle team. It's a lifestyle he's become quite used to. After catapulting to the top of the Paralympian ski world, he's a sporting star who is now very much in demand. Is it to you or is it to... Make it to my son because I think he'll think that's pretty awesome. A self-taught public speaker, his corporate speaking schedule is increasingly crammed with appearances where he leaves behind his inspirational message with new fans and newfound friends. So are you going to be skiing in 2010? I hope so. Okay. All the work has geared me towards that. That's definitely one of the things that the RBC program allows me to do is get out there and stay well connected with my community, whether I'm engaging an audience such as you or working within a school system. Helps to balance things out for me, which I really cherish and honor that opportunity. So this is the sit ski. This is. It looks tippy. Now, how long His notoriety and fame spread quickly for someone once virtually unknown outside of a small circle. That all changed when he won the 2009 Para-Alpine Downhill Championship, raising expectations for a repeat performance in his home province at the 2010 Paralympic Games. Awesome. He makes it look so easy, it's ridiculous. It's like kind of driving a big toilet down the street <laughs> <laughs> on skis. I'm Josh Duick, and a man of many titles, a boy of many titles, somewhere in the middle there, but <clears throat> I'm on Canada's Paralympic ski team, and my aspirations for the last few years have been to represent Canada at 2010, and I'm getting one step closer every day, so that's exciting. Josh Duick not only became a skiing superstar, he also became a super force in the boardroom, the classroom, and the workplace, using his inspirational story to illustrate the vigilance and attention needed to learn the dangers of work and play. But it's not what you see in life, it's how you see it. And this is a very incredible individual that I'm quoting. He lost the use of both of his legs. He ended up climbing Kilimanjaro with no legs. And quoting Rick Hansen, anything's possible if you focus on it. Uh, what does the International Paralympic Day mean to you? It means International Paralympic Day to me means a celebration of inclusion and a world without boundaries. Let's do it one more time. There are people coming in the background. I'll be just, just be a little bit. You're like I'm reading it. No, I can't. I can't. Like you can't. Were on that. Okay. Hi, I'm Josh Stewart, a member of the Canadian Paralympic Alpine Ski Team. He has evolved into a cover boy for his sport, a role model in a role he never expected to play. Some of the best of them are right here in Canada. Whistler, Kimberly, Fernie, Bam. Growing up in Kimberly, the talented teenager took a job as head coach at the Silver Star Freestyle Club in Vernon. After I finished high school, I started chasing down my dream, which was to be a professional skier. Moved to Whistler in 98. Did a couple years with the BC Freestyle team. People knew me to be that guy that would jump bigger and just go for it. I moved into coaching. After a couple years of that, I found myself in a wheelchair. While demonstrating a jump in 2004, he overshot his landing. His dreams and his life were shattered in a few disastrous split seconds. Long, painful months of rehabilitation would follow, but only after he overcame the biggest roadblocks to every recovery. Depression, anger, and self-pity. He channeled his competitive energy into a new challenge, accepting his fate and moving on with the help of the freestyle community, his parents, 
and his future wife, Lacey. I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't hard at times, but I think those times, just they just make you stronger and uh, a lot easier just to accept what comes at you when it does. These dogs have a worse attention span than I do. Romy. We took it really slow at first because we never knew if maybe emotions were running high just due to the scenario that was playing out. And uh, as time went on, we really started to make a really strong and positive connection and she supported me in a lot of my goals and I was able to compliment her and some of hers. We call it prehab, so it's preventative habilitation rather than injuring yourself and going to rehab. We try and pinpoint what would be the most susceptible, which is our shoulders, because we use it every day for wheeling and transferring and stuff like that, and then try and incorporate that into a dynamic routine. Nice. A couple things that I really like about training with the team is the, the competitiveness that can build on it. So I can see how these guys have been training and what their strengths are and try and draw from that and hopefully they can do the same. See where I've been making my improvements and work off of that. And again, we all have slightly different disabilities so we can learn from each other and how we've adapted to that. And uh, it's also just building that energy towards 2010. You know, we are an individual sport competing for each other, but there's nobody I'd rather cheering me on than my teammates because they really know what it takes and what we've been through because as much as I want to kick his ass on the hill, and as much as he wants to kick mine on the hill, nobody's going to cheer louder for each other when we're doing well. When he won the title this year in Korea at the World Championships, it was the most exciting time for the team in many, many years. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do are some intervals. So I want you to be in anaerobic zone. Everyone remembers the heart rate. Josh is really new to the sport, but has made huge improvements in a short time on the circuit, and he really is an important part of our team. He's got amazing attitude, outlook, and a lot of people on our team rely on his spirit and motivation to keep their spirit and motivation up, so he's definitely an important part of the team. Sometimes those high spirits, confidence, and exuberance lead him into trouble trying to push too far and too fast. Yeah, hang up, apparently. Josh is in the ditch. I didn't react the way I should have and <laughs> parked it in the ditch. Physically, I'm fine, just that's nothing, just a little raspberry on the skin. It's perfect, really, on a day like today when you drive yourself beyond the point of exhaustion, shit happens. <laughs> so if you could just help guide my feet, because they are yeah. going to. I was gonna get this for you. When stuff does happen, there's always an expert there to help work out the kinks. No One of the perks of being an elite <laughs> athlete. That's a nice spot in here, Josh. Are you getting massages at home right now? No. Just trying to scale through your thoracic. You're, you're not crazy tight, which is good. What you really are trying to do is trying to maintain regularity with your body. For nutrition. A valuable part of the training process is getting help in everything, including nutrition. But Josh can only handle so much advice before his irreverent sense of humor kicks in. What if it's a nice, like, Saturday afternoon, I'm sitting on the beach and I drink a box of beer, and then I fall asleep? It's happened. I'm just curious. I just, I want to know what that's going to do to my training plan. You have to remember, when we talk about alcohol, and it's, it's good to bring that up. And yeah, Josh is definitely a class clown from time to time, keeps us all on our toes, enlightens the tension when there's sticky situations, but indeed he, uh, he's got a lot of great characteristics that make him unique and make him successful. I am proud and pleased that we could honor the contribution of all the workers, workers whose jobs are inscribed in the line of work. In 2009, the 27-year-old world champion from the small town of Kimberley watched in humble disbelief as his plaque was added to Line of Work, a tribute to those who overcame serious workplace injury and disease. It's a permanent display where thousands pass by every day on the seawall beside the Vancouver Convention Center. I think my story, the way that I would like to see it told, came out very well. You, you boiled it yeah. down. And yeah. It's very easy to read. All these stories, are, they really do fit each other, and they are, they're not just three things, they're one thing, you know, you know it's, it's a story about, you know, 
redemption. To be a part of such a positive, forward-thinking, forward-moving project in order to eliminate any sort of hazards in the workplace is an incredible honor, to say the least. Having scaled the summit, Josh Duick has discovered that even stars don't live in a perfect world, where everything goes as planned, every time. There's a little piece of grass signal right there. Oh, that's a nice cool breeze. We're real close, guys. Uh, boom's in the shot. People in the shot. A little dark. Did I get all the ugly off my face? Is it be okay? Camera's ready, whenever. Getting Canada's Alpine athletes where they need to go. Cal Tire, true service. Cut. Ken Reed and Rob Boyd were part of the first wave of Crazy Canucks. Swashbuckling daredevils who skied beyond the edge of sanity and were hailed as heroes. Josh Duick's heroism transcends the stage drama of sport. He had the courage and heart to overcome a broken body and mind and climb back to the top of the mountain. It's earned him a chance to achieve something not even the craziest of Canucks could do, win an Olympic gold medal. Timing is everything, so right now the whole team is in the ascendancy and there's, there's resources available, which uh, if you look back six, seven years ago, they weren't there. But at the end of the day, you still have to have talent to combine with resources to get to the top. And, uh, and so that's what uh, I see with, with Josh and, and, and the whole Canadian Pair Alpine team and program, which is one of the reasons why they're the number one program in the world. I'm trying not to really think about Josh winning, winning the gold at 2010. And, just trying to be more through the process of it and enjoying every moment and uh, enjoy that moment when it actually arrives. I don't think anybody could predict a storyline like this. Hey? A small town kid who had aspirations and dreams to be a freestyle skier and all of a sudden in a flash found myself in a wheelchair and one thing led to the next and I really think it's you know, a product of where I'm coming from, the, uh, the community that I grew up in and the community of freestyle skiers have had a positive impact on me, which has made it pretty easy for me to get back on the mountain and chase down that dream all over again, just in a slightly different capacity. And to be where I'm at today is, <laughs> I love it. Jessica Fliegenhart, Josh Duick, wonderfully likable, remarkably quotable. The camera and microphone love them. They found a new destiny and purpose in life, a life they thought was over after a personal tragedy that turned out to be a new beginning. United by circumstance and fate, they go their separate ways as two of the most powerful new weapons in the fight to raise the expectations of others and increase awareness of the need for safety and caution in the workplace. By doing what I love to do and following my dreams and my passions, I am a champion of courage. If I can utilize that story, connect with the audience, and allow them to be a little more aware of their intuition, they can learn that through my experience without having to deal with a significant disability. It makes me happy. I know that a lot can be learned from my story, and, and I try to, and I do try to spread a message. And, it's about each of us has made a conscious decision to uh, do what we can with what we got where we are and, and we're, we're carrying on and doing some pretty cool things in spite of all that stuff that happened.